Hi everyone, I'm Catherine. Today I'm going to go into a little bit more detail about the Dremel materials that they sell online. I was given a package of each of their materials to try out and I did a quick overview to introduce you to what the materials are, but now I've been playing with them a little bit. So I want to give you an update on my personal experience using them and uh, just tips and tricks for how to cut well with these types of materials. So first up, I'm gonna talk about the two different woods that Dremel sells. They have a walnut plywood, which is a darker finish. It has a tighter grain to it, and it's absolutely beautiful. I have really enjoyed working with this. Uh, and they also have a birch plywood. You can see that that has a little bit larger of a grain. It's a light wood, and this has been awesome to use day to day for almost anything that I wanna cut. So to give you an idea of price, the uh, birch plywood is $40 for a pack of five sheets. And those sheets are already pre-cut to 12 by 20, so they fit perfectly in the Dremel laser cutter. And that equals out to about three cents per square inch. The walnut plywood is a little bit more expensive. It's $115 for five sheets, and that equals out to about 10 cents per square inch. And I like keeping the uh, price per square inch in mind as I'm designing my jewelry and my other laser cut goods. So I understand how much I'm spending on the materials uh, and keep that in mind as I'm pricing it for retail and make sure that the designs I'm making uh, make sense to sell uh, for the price point of this material. So let's take a look at how these uh, cut and engrave. The first one is the birch wood here. Uh, for each of my materials, I cut a test swatch. And I have a video that describes how to do that and provides the actual file for it for both Dremel specifically and for laser cutters in general. So for this, uh, this swatch really helps me out on the birch because, because I can get lots of different colors. You can see the difference in all the way from this lightest to the, the darkest, which is 90% uh, depth and I believe 25% speed. So it also allows me to see how deep those engravings are going. And for cutting, I just use the standard cut setting that Dremel provides in the software. So that is super easy. But you can see across my different designs that I do a lot with the engraving in order to get a specific color, depth, or effect when I combine different uh, engraving depths together to create a final piece. So for example, if you take a look at these Jupiters, you can see how I've uh, played with different settings with these three Jupiter pendants. And I took a couple different tries to figure out exactly the kind of effect that I wanted, uh, whether it was just very subtle, like this first one, but I couldn't really see the detail that I had drawn in the Illustrator file. So I did a little bit uh, darker here, but everything is rastered, is engraved. So my darker and my lighter kind of blended together a little bit. So one version I ended up with was this high contrast version where I did not engrave on the lightest section, um, but I did a medium engrave and then a very deep engrave uh, surrounding the medium. So you can see how there are kind of outlines to the medium area and that really made it pop. So playing around with the different settings allows me to get the right effect, especially from the birch. So the birch is really awesome for doing prototypes and tests because it's a little bit less expensive, but then I can also do some final versions and have this nice light wood. So for example, for this necklace, this is just one cut. It takes about two minutes to cut this out and it only needs one pass to cut, which is great. And that gives me a final piece that I can either paint or I can stain or I can leave as light wood. For most of my stuff, I leave it as light wood because I like the, the color. One other example of what I've made with the birch plywood is this firefly pendant. I have a full video on this, but to give you an overview, I did a couple prototypes of this one and have made a three layer um, pendant that houses electronics in the back of it so that when I flip it on, I have uh, the firefly lights that light up. 
And that also allowed me to do different depths and have the, the fireflies pop out, have the leaves be a different color. And that's why I really like this specific plywood. It's also very flat. So if you are doing engraving work, it's nice to have official materials from a laser cutter provider uh, because they're gonna make sure that the wood is as flat as possible. And that gives you the best results when you're engraving. If you're just cutting, it doesn't matter quite as much, but it does create a very nice finish for, for the cuts. So now let's talk about the walnut wood. For this, I was really excited to try it out because this is a dark wood. It is a harder wood, so the um, grain is tighter and it's just very beautiful. I love the color on this. Uh, taking a look at the swatch, uh, this is where doing a swatch first is super helpful. So I did my standard swatch for this and notice how every single one except for this top corner is um, actually below the walnut veneer. And that is really good to know so that if I am engraving something and I want the lighter wood of the plywood to show through, I can do that. But if I really just want a slightly darker walnut, I really need to stick to the recommended uh, engraving settings that Dremel has. So this is 20% depth and 100% speed. Dremel's default is 11% depth and 100% speed. So make sure if you are going to use especially more expensive materials that you test a tiny piece of it first so you don't ruin a huge piece of it uh, and that was really helpful here. But you can see on the earrings that I've been making that I have been using that lighter um, plywood as a benefit and just by taking a little bit extra off from the walnut ply, I get that lighter color and it really makes it pop because of the contrast and I love that. I've also just been cutting some uh, general shapes. So the, the dark wood has that nice final finish so I don't need to do anything extra. And I've been doing a few different designs that have acrylic as an accent piece. And the acrylic really pops with the, the dark wood. And I just love, love how it dangles. So, yeah. Um, one nice thing about this is once I have my file set up in Illustrator with the specific uh, distance that those two holes need to have between them, I can perfectly center my acrylic inside of the hole. So let me say that a different way. When you see the acrylic, you see where the, this metal ring is going into the top and the bottom hole. And I have that saved as a specific uh, template piece in my, in my Illustrator file. And I can use that anywhere to now perfectly position the holes for this specific size of link. And you'll see that in a lot of the earrings I'll show you in just a second. The one other thing that I wanna point out about the walnut is because it is more expensive, I've been trying to find ways to maximize the material. And one example of that is when I made this pendant necklace, I had these pieces that could have been trash. But in my file, I went ahead and put uh, holes in them, and then I made an entire set of earrings out of the extra pieces from that pendant. So by nesting and by thinking ahead of how you might use the scraps of the material that are being made from your files, you can actually make your material go a lot further. And like I said, that's really important when it's a material that you've paid a premium for. You want to make sure you can use as much of that as possible. So the walnut has been really nice uh, from Dremel to uh, mostly cut with and to do a little bit of engraving on. And I'm planning on doing some lighter engraving on future pieces to really take advantage of the just a little bit darker of the walnut without going all the way to the plywood portion. Okay, the last section of materials are the different acrylics. So Dremel has three acrylics that they sell online. They have a uh, completely transparent, they have a transparent frosted, which take a little bit closer look at that. That's the frosted side. And they have a light blue transparent. So these three are great acrylics for um, really any, any kind of use that you would have for it, but it's good for base 
materials and then add a little pop of color with a different material. And you'll see that here. But first, let's take a look at the swatches that I cut for these. For acrylic, you'll notice um, engraving on acrylic just gives um, a slightly uh, dusty appearance. Um, and you can't really tell a difference in color from the engraving. And that's okay, but you can still get the different depths. So for example, I don't know if you're gonna be able to see it well here, but there's, there is definitely a difference in depth between these different rectangles. But the other nice thing of doing these swatches is being able to see how the default scoring looks on the material itself. So you don't have to do a, um, a, a cut or a, a raster. If you just want some lines, you can use the scoring that is the default setting on Dremel. So for these, um, I did just the engraving on the swatches and it's pretty stinky. Uh, acrylic is plastic. So when you are cutting or engraving on it, it is releasing some toxic stuff. So you wanna make sure that your ventilation is set up really well. Um, potentially even having the booster fan. I have the booster fan and that was very helpful in uh, cutting the acrylic and cutting leather, which is the other like stinkiest material. So for these, for the examples of what I've been cutting with it, it's mostly been um, just cutting the acrylic and, and mostly for earrings uh, with these three materials. So you can see with the, the clear, that is actually really fun because when I, when I wear this, the, you can see the, um, di the diamond shape, but also from a distance, you don't, so it just looks like that little smaller diamond is floating and that's pretty fun. Um, and for the frosted, the frosted is probably my favorite out of the three. It's just really beautiful. It's still, you can still see through it, but it has just enough of a finish on the front of it that it, you can see it really clearly. Oops. Um, and it just looks really polished. I love how that finish looks. And then for the blue, the blue, would, if you catch the side of it, it almost has this like bright electric color that pops through, but it's uh, still subtle when you're wearing it. So those have been really fun. The colored acrylic that is inside of these, I got from different um, vendors online. And I'll do a separate uh, video about where to, where to get that extra material. But you'll notice also with when I cut these um, earrings out, I made sure to cut an extra hole into the middle pieces that I was making. And then that way I can actually string up all of those extra pieces into uh, additional earrings. So like this whole pair of earrings is pretty much free. This would have been trash. So once again, thinking through how to really use your materials wisely and get the most out of them. And I would say overall, the, the acrylics are really nice from uh, Dremel. They come with plastic on both sides. Um, I peeled the plastic off the top in order to have a clean uh, cut and make sure that this plastic doesn't melt into the acrylic and, and make it kind of nasty edges. Uh, and then leaving the plastic on the back side of it allows you to store the material with a lower likelihood of it getting scratched. So that's the only thing with the acrylic. If it does get scratched, it's very difficult to um, clean that off. I mean, you're just gonna have a scratch on it. So overall, the materials for Dremel are awesome. They're cut to the exact shape. Some of them are a smidge different sizes, but I'm okay getting a little bit extra uh, of the walnut. And it still fits into the laser bed perfectly. The woods are very flat. The acrylics, none of them were scratched when I received them, which can happen in transport. And so they've, all five of these materials have been wonderful to work with so far. Uh, I'm currently doing a 100 day project on Instagram. I've got a separate video if you're interested in looking at that. 
and I've been playing around with different ways to mix and match these materials and also just different shapes and designs. So if you're interested in seeing more about these materials, uh, please follow me on Instagram at Catherine Makes or continue to watch these videos on YouTube. I'll be posting more about future use of the materials and especially getting into a little bit more engraving. My next step is gonna be uh, doing some photo engraving on all of these materials to see how that specifically works and to get a better feel for the other features of the Dremel laser cutter that I haven't played around with very much yet. So thank you so much for watching. Uh, please subscribe if you are excited about laser cutters and wanna see more. And let me know in the comments if you have any questions about these materials or other materials that you can use on your laser cutter. Thanks.